Hello and welcome to my video series on Acebrite for Beginners. In this video I'm going to be going over the tools that I missed out last time such as Blur, Jumble and Spray. These tools take a little bit longer to master and this is why I have left them till this video where I will be going over the tool settings which is this bar along the top so that I can show you the true power of these advanced tools. The tool settings bar has some self-explanatory stuff. You have the brush type which I will be going over in another tutorial when I go over brushes. You have the brush size in pixels, the brush angle if you are using the square brush or the line brush, and you have ink, which I will be going over in this tutorial. You have pixel perfect and the symmetry options. But let's start with ink. Simple ink acts as you would expect a brush to act. It simply places your chosen colour on the canvas. If you change the alpha property, it will overlay the colour on the canvas and if you put the alpha property to zero it will act like an eraser next up is alpha compositing now when you click alpha compositing you will notice that you get an opacity value this is usually default 255 now at 255 it will act like simple ink and just replace any color on the canvas with your primary color if you lower the opacity down to around 50%, when painting on the canvas, it will merge whatever colour is underneath with the colour you are using. I am using black at just below 50% opacity. If I paint on the red now, it will make it slightly darker. The more clicks I use, the darker it will become. This is very similar to the dodge and burn tool that you find in other applications. If I take white, you'll see that it lightens it. The next ink is copy alpha and color. If we use the alpha and drag it down, it will replace any color on the canvas layer. So instead of merging colors by alpha compositing, it will simply replace them. As you can see, the red is replaced. It's not so easy to see with the black, so I'm just going to change the color to green right now and put the alpha down. So you can see it is simply replaced. Next up is lock alpha. So when you lock alpha, the alpha values no longer change. Only the color values will change. So if I am using this green over the red, it will mix the colors again. So next up is shading. When you first click this, you might get a little bit confused. It says here, select colors in the palette. Now that can be a bit confusing. As you select colors, nothing actually happens. What you need to do is drag and select. So hold down the mouse button and drag, and then you'll get your shaded colors. Now what I'm gonna do here is create a circle with this color. Now go over to the filled ellipse tool, go back up to simple ink so I can create the circle, create my circle or oval in this case, go back down to shading and select my colors. Now with shading selected, and my shades on the top and my circle here that I want to shade what I should do is go and click it but there will be a problem when I try to paint nothing happens this is because I don't have this color in my shades to be able to shade you need to have the color you are shading included in your shades so I'm going to drag my shades again this time including the color that I have used for the ellipse now when I go over and click it will shade Now what this does is it cycles through these colors that you have. Every time you release the mouse button and click again, it will use the next color. To go backwards, you use the alternative mouse button. And it will cycle back through the colors the other way. Now for a bunch of random colors, that's not going to be very useful. But for a gradient, it can be quite useful. Especially when you're using light and dark colors, you can start shading how you want it. Don't mind my terrible art right now. <laughs> so that is the end of all the inks. The last option I guess I might as well go over is the same in all tools. Basically all that means is that when you're changing tools, it will keep the same ink. So if I am on simple ink and brush, it will be simple ink and brush. If I move to the paint bucket tool, it will still be on simple ink. If I change it to copy alpha and color, and then switch back to the brush tool, it will be on copy alpha and color. If you don't want this effect, just turn off same in all tools. 
However, I recommend keeping it on just to save some confusion when switching through tools. Now you know a little bit more about how ink works and a few other settings, we can move on to the remaining tools. Let's start with the spray paint tool. For its simplest, it is just like any other spray tool. It sprays on random pixels while you hold and drag the mouse. But playing with the settings, you can get some really good effects out of it, especially when combined with the inks. Let me show you. I'm going to set the spray width, which is this first number, down to around 5. This means it will be a much thinner spray. I'm also going to move the spray speed up to around 18. This means it'll spray faster, meaning less gaps. I'm going to choose a size of around 4, quickly drop in a background colour, select white and puff up a cloud. Now that was the easiest cloud I've ever made. Now you can stay simple like that and you can make way more advanced clouds. But just to show you the power of this tool, I'm going to use it along with shading. So first I'm going to create a quick gradient by moving my white colour to the very end, selecting a colour that is off-white, adding that colour to the palette, Creating a gap by dragging that colour further away. Create the gradient by selecting and dragging between the colours. Click the little drop down. Hit gradient and we have our gradient. Now we can go to spray. Change the ink to shading. We have our gradient as we already have it selected. So our shades are up there. We have our base colour included for the clouds which was bright white which means we can just go ahead and shade. Now I am shading with the spray tool. So when I shade, it's gonna quickly go to the very last color. Same when I shade back the other way, it's gonna quickly go back to white. So what I want to do is just select a gradient between the first two colors, and then I can continue to shade my clouds. Add in a few little highlights here and there. I can then select the next two colours, which is the darker colour of the cloud, and the next one down. Take note here that I do not have the white colour selected, so I will not be able to overwrite the white of the cloud. As you can see, it just goes around white. No matter what I do, that highlight will stay there. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of shadow now. And again, select the next two colours. And again, this won't overwrite the colours that I already have on because I don't have them selected in my shades. Finish off with a little bit more dark. And there you have some pretty little clouds. It's nothing special, but if you spend a lot more time on something like this, you can get something really special using a very simple method. This is how powerful the spray tool can be. Making jobs such as making clouds or textures for wool, among other things, much simpler. So the next little trick I'm going to show you is just something fun to mess about with. So I've selected all the shades, I'm back on the layer that I want to shade, and I've put the spray speed up a little bit, the width up a little bit, and just spray away. And you can create some pretty cool effects. With the right colours and the right shades, with this you can create some explosions, you can create magical effects you can create all kinds of things so the spray tool is a very simple tool but in the right hands it can be very very strong next up is the gradient tool now the gradient tool is simply one color to the next you click and drag and it creates a gradient i have already gone over tolerance and contiguance in a previous tutorial so next we'll move on to differing you may or may not know what differing is but with this option you don't really need to know Instead of creating a smooth gradient, you can use Differing, which is fairly popular in pixel art, especially when using shading on textures, and it will create a differed effect. Instead of it being a smooth gradient, it is now quite textured and blocky. This tool can come in very handy for creating stuff like night skies or skies in general. Absolutely great for backdrops. Next up, we have the Jumble tool. Now, this can be used for tons of things as you can see what it does is it takes the pixels and randomly jumbles them up this is very good for textures i like to use this for texturing stuff like carpets or rust another thing i use this for which is fairly common for me is creating a panel now to create a panel what i do is i select an area fill that area in with the gradient tool using some kind of differing then I go ahead and take the jumble tool, and what I want to do is I want to jumble everything in the middle. However, I don't want this effect around the side, not just yet. I just want to jumble the middle up. To do this, what I do is I go to select, 
hit modify, hit contract, buy one, and square brush. Don't worry too much about what I've just gone over there. I will be going over this in another tutorial. So now I have this middle area selected. I'm going to take the opacity of the jumble tool down. Now what this does is it still randomly jumbles it up, but it will also use a blur effect at the same time. Now the strength of the opacity will decide how blurry and rough it is. I usually keep it around 200. Next up, I want to take away my selection, just shrink down this box a little bit, put the opacity back up to 255, and instead of clicking and dragging down the lines, all I have to do is click once, hold shift down, and click in the next corner, and the next corner, next corner, and next corner. And you can go around as many times as you want. But as you can see in the preview, this creates quite a nice little panel for you to start drawing things in and other such stuff. Here you can see where I've used these panels before. The blur tool does exactly what it says. It, it blurs everything. But if you use it subtly and wisely, you can create some pretty cool shading. Now instead of me having to find a color between this highlight here and this base color, I can simply use a blur tool at full power and click this box and it will do it for me. That way I have a nice, simple way of finding a color that is in between the two colors. There is another little trick that the blur tool can do that I find a little bit cheating and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It depends how com complex your picture is. You can use a blur tool at full opacity. If you are on one layer and you have a, you actually have the background on the same layer, you can just click on like so and create some nice, easy, and very fake AA. <laughs> and yes, it works. So there are your tips for these tools and the information on all the tool settings and the ink options. I hope that this has cleared a few things up for you and given you some deeper insights into using the tools in A-Sprite. Join me next week for another tutorial. I hope you all have a good week.